Well, hey, everybody. How are you doing? Hopefully well. Um, one of the things I've been wanting to talk about as regards the uh, coronavirus crisis is how it seems to me pretty obvious that they chose this situation and that begs all sorts of questions as to why. Um, but before I even explore possible reasons why, um, I think it is a good idea to explore why I think that they chose this to happen. Now, there's an awful lot of uh, scrambling going on at the moment uh, in official circles uh, and media pundits trying to sort of uh, rewrite history, which is one thing when you're talking about decades or centuries in past, but it's another thing when you're talking about a couple of months ago when there's video footage and memory that's still fresh of things people were doing and saying uh, at the time. And um, so I'm just going to go through uh, the evolution of my understanding about what happened as a lay person and, and tell you a little bit about why it's that reason that I don't believe that they didn't know this sooner than, they, than they're, you know, trying to make out that they did. I mean, the governor of one of the southern states, I think his name is Brian Kemp, uh, said that he only just found out Tuesday that you could uh, communicate this virus while you didn't show any symptoms, while you didn't know you were ill. And that's just patently false. I mean, if he didn't know that, then he's admitting he's incompetent. He's supposed to know these things. These are, these are the kinds of things that leaders are supposed to know. And this is the thing. There seems to be a, uh, an instinct, even amongst people who don't necessarily consider themselves Trump supporters, uh, there, there is this, this rush almost to absolve Trump of responsibility. Uh, 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 and, and by that, I mean, uh, there's people in the media, for example, saying, oh, you know, thank goodness he's taking it seriously now and he's stepping up to the challenge and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's like when someone's house burns down and they show up and it's already on fire and they, and they start and, and they grab a hose and say, hey, you know, here I am to help. It's still burning down. And, uh, you know, I just I can't really understand this 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 rush to absolve the president of responsibility. So let me go into my understanding of how things evolved and why I don't abide the official story. Now, um, in December of last year, um, it was already known that there was a problem in China. And on the 31st of December, the World Health Organization declared an international health emergency, which is like a stage before uh, declaring pandemic. And so that was at the end of last year, the very end of last year. And Trump started uh, mentioning, uh, in, in terms of my awareness, Trump, Trump started mentioning the coronavirus in the middle of January. And uh, I think around about the t that time, we had the very first person in the United States who had tested positive for coronavirus. And he was very much downplaying it at that time. Um, and uh, then I was at that time where my head was at as I was thinking, hey, you know, we've had like, you know, Zika virus and SARS and Ebola scares and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, some of them, you know, they were, they were people died. Yeah, sure. But it didn't turn out to be uh, an international thing like it is at the moment. Uh, so I wasn't quite as, uh, I, I wasn't, I, I, I didn't really have a, a proper awareness of how serious the disease was until probably about the getting towards the end of January. This is me myself. Um, because uh, I, one, I, you know, I read that they had uh, locked down 50 million people in China. And at that point, you realize it's out of control. And when you realize something is out of control, you realize that this is obviously way more contagious than, than it let on. And that's when I personally found out, sort of second half of January, that's when I found out that you could have the virus for uh, up to two weeks before you even presented any symptoms. And you could have the virus and not present any symptoms at all. Uh, and all by itself, that makes it more contagious because you can spread it around without having the slightest idea that you've got it. And then um, in the uh, middle of February, I, uh, I read an article. Uh, it was written by a doctor in Italy uh, who was working in Lombardy, which is in the north of Italy. Um, and Italy's healthcare system is like rated the second best in the world, I think. 
and he was talking about how the hospitals were already over 200% capacity, that they're having to make life and death choices about who gets to have a ventilator and whatever. Um, and this was like in the first 10 days or so of February. And once I realized what was going on in Italy, I, I knew that it was pretty serious. And um, uh, because because uh, they had, I, I think they had only just, just locked down or were about to lock down or something like that when I read this article. I can't really remember the timeline ex specific as to whether or not they'd locked down yet. I think they had. But um, yeah, they were already panicking. Uh, in February, and then I, then my friend Jen, who works in a hospital, explained to me that what they're not telling people, and she she knew in the health service she, they knew what was coming, because she knew this is what they're not telling people is this disease is how infectious the disease is, and that without without people locking down, you know that you're going to tend to uh, an infected person tends to on average infect three people, and each of those three people therefore will infect three people, and if you know anything about math, three times three times three times three, it builds up fucking fast. And um, when she showed me that, I was like, holy shit. I mean, I, I considered not going to work for the last two weeks before I finally did stop going to work. Um, but uh, people were already, uh, uh, you know, abandoning their posts, as it were, and I tried to stay in there for as long as I could. Um, but I'm glad I managed to get out uh, before the actual official lockdown started. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, so that was the middle of February for me that I actually realized, holy fuck, you know, there's nothing that we can do if we don't lock down, you know, we're, we're screwed. Um, and uh, it was only a matter of time. I knew that. I didn't have a clue really um, what the, the, the actual death rate is as compared to how many people have it. Because of course, unless you're testing everyone, you don't really know. And so I'm going to skip ahead in my timeline a bit now. I, I found out a, a little, not that long ago that Iceland, because of its small population, they managed to test their entire country, which is quite an achievement. And um, they found in their, in their sample, anyways, of, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people, um, that half the people who tested positive with the virus showed no symptoms at all. Half. So just because you don't feel ill doesn't necessarily mean you're not sick or, or not carrying. And uh, if you're carrying, you can spread it. So locking down is like super, super important. Anyway, back to why I don't believe the, the, the official line. They knew in the end of December that it was coming. They knew, and we also know as a matter of just fact that the... Uh, the state media in China is going to underplay their numbers. We know that. We knew that. Then be in no doubt that we have intelligence people on the ground in China giving our government true numbers of what's going on over there. Don't think we don't know what's going on. Come on. You know, yeah, oh, we, we knew what was coming. We knew. The United States government, Donald Trump personally knew what was coming. He had experts warning him. Now, there's a difference between what they were saying publicly and what they knew privately. And how do you know they knew this shit privately? Because some of these Republican motherfuckers in Congress dumped their stocks in sensitive uh, companies that they knew were going to be in trouble as a result of this pandemic right before the fucking crash happened, like literally right before it happened. They knew it was coming. They fucking knew. Donald Trump, meanwhile, all through January and February was going golfing uh, and, and verbally playing down the pandemic. You know, he's famously said, hey, we've only got 15 people and so far no one's died and pretty soon it's going to be close to zero and blah, blah, blah. And he started referring to it in, as a hoax, a democratic hoax uh, around about the middle of February, maybe even the beginning of February. And the last time that I'm aware of him calling it a hoax was at a rally that he had. I think it's the last rally that he had on the 28th of February, where he called it the Democratic hoax, their new hoax, he said. And I think he had to stop saying that because on the 29th of February, the United States had its first death from coronavirus. So, um, you know, they, uh, the, the bottom line is they knew, they had experts telling them in January, they knew it was coming. Now, in the beginning of February, there, 
the Trump administration as an act of mercy towards China because China was really suffering. They had uh, 17 tons of uh, you know medical protective equipment that they uh, donated to China as a humanitarian act, and I fully support that, uh, considering at the time what was going on in China versus at the time what was going on in America, but they should have replenished that stock immediately, like immediately. Immediately. There's no excuse for not replenishing it, especially when you know what's coming. No excuse whatsoever. So it starts to beg the question, do they really want this to happen? You know, there's, um, I'm not saying they made it happen or any stupid conspiracy shit like that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that governments throughout human history, despite what country you're talking about, when there's been pandemics, governments have used them to crack down. It's, it's just historically what happens. And um, I think there's a massive money grab going on uh, as part of it because these people know that eventually the whole, the whole shebang is going to crash down. And uh, so they're squirreling away as much money as they possibly can uh, while there's still a chance to do it. Meanwhile, millions of Americans are suffering. Uh, today, it was announced that another 6.6 .6 million people have filed for unemployment in America on top of last week, which is 3.3 million. So that's near enough 10 million people that have filed for unemployment uh, in the past two weeks. 10 million people. 10 million. And that, that's still just the beginning of what's coming. And um, so it's not just a case of people are going to be dying from coronavirus. People are going to be dying from starvation. People are going to be dying from killing each other over resources if we're not careful. Um, we've got to be really careful with, with making sure that we stay together. We're all in this together. You know, uh, We can't let ourselves become each other's enemies. And there seems to be certain noises uh, from people in America who want that to be the case. Uh, you know, the governor of Florida was uh, going on about how it's the fault of people coming into Florida from out of the state that Florida's got such a massive problem. And uh, that's a bit rich from someone who only just locked their state down yesterday, even though this has been going on for fucking two months now. So their inaction when they knew something was coming to me was deliberate. They knew, they knew it was coming. They knew and they chose, chose not only not to do something about it, but to lie to you and me and everybody else and try and play it down like it wasn't such a big deal. And you can try and explain that away. You can, you can say, oh, you know, they didn't want the stock market to tank. Well, thanks. Thanks. You know, thanks for admitting that uh, capitalism and, and making money is more important to you than fucking human life. Thanks for admitting it. Thanks for just coming right out and saying it. Right. Fuck's sake. It blows my mind. And, 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 and that's not even speculation on my part. I mean, two fucking weeks ago or less than that, we, I think it was sometime last week, the lieutenant governor of uh, Texas famously said, hey, you know, listen, old people, it's OK to lay down your lives. We don't need to quarantine. We don't need to do anything. It's OK. Just go ahead and die. We've had our lives. Uh, America's for the children. You know, it's OK to, to you know, I, I'd quite happily risk dying uh, just to make sure that my kids didn't have to, uh, you know, uh, grow up in a world where they ha might have to wear a mask or or, um, you know, be careful. Because all we're being asked to do at the moment is to be careful, to be safe, uh, and to do what is best for ourselves as a community, as a community. You know, uh, if you're locked in because you can be, you're doing the best thing that you can possibly be doing right now. Um, and anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to jump down that hole. Um, getting back to uh, the dereliction of duty from our politicians, and the fact is it's still going on right now. There's still loads of states in America who haven't locked down properly. When Trump has dragged his feet uh, issuing a national, uh, you know, uh, stay-at-home order. Why? We know. We can see the results. And to prove the point, South Korea had their first coronavirus case declared on the same day that the United States had their first coronavirus case to care. And um, South Korea was prepared for this eventuality because they've been through uh, infectious um, outbreaks before. And, you know, that's the thing. I was a Boy Scout when I, when I was a kid. And uh, the motto for Boy Scouts is be prepared. 
And it, as corny as it might sound, that is a really, really good motto, you know, um, because in life you never know what's going to happen. And you should always be prepared for something to happen because you never know what tomorrow is going to bring. Anyway, um, and South Korea was prepared. So when they found out that they had coronavirus declared in their country, they went into this aggressive uh, testing campaign where they were testing 15,000 people a day. Yeah. Uh, they made the entire country put masks on and they tested everybody. And when, whenever they came across someone who tested positive, they did contact tracing and tested everybody that they had been in contact with. They never had to do a lockdown. They haven't had to do a lockdown in South Korea. And uh, despite the fact that thousands of people contracted uh, COVID-19 in South Korea, they've had like, what, 169 deaths as of the moment I make this video. 169 without a lockdown so don't tell me that uh you know if you don't take early aggressive action it won't make a difference the proof is already right in front of us singapore same story they took aggressive action they've had a, a, a minimal outbreak compared to everybody else because they were on the ball as soon as they realized what the situation was they did something about it and they took care of the situation and they are going to come out of it way earlier than everybody else does and if our leaders were smart and cared about our lives, uh, they would have been on this shit too. Now, here's the thing. Um, as, as far as I'm concerned, there's two possibilities here. Either uh, you can say that uh, Trump and his people, everyone around him, people in the media, uh, all, uh, everybody uh, in the early days, you know, say January onwards till about the middle of March, uh, you know, they, they it, wasn't, it wasn't that they were deliberately downplaying it. You know, they just weren't smart enough. They just didn't really see uh, the, the, the actual level of the problem. They hadn't really sort of faced the problem. And really, they didn't realize the severity of it. They didn't realize the severity of it. You can believe that. Or you can believe that they saw what was coming, didn't prepare for it, and therefore it becomes a deliberate act. It becomes something so if you know what the consequences of inaction are going to be and you choose not to act, you're responsible for those consequences. It's a trolley problem. Anyway, um, uh, anyway, I, so, so which would you prefer? Would you prefer that the government is too inept to do the right thing? That you're too stupid, that they're too, they're, they're, they're just too uh, swallowed up with their own agendas to actually realize what the truth is and do the right thing. Would you prefer to believe that? Or would you prefer to believe they want this to happen? They, this is like a call as far as I could see. To take, and why do I say that? Because the old guy was saying last week, like I said, uh, go ahead and let your old people die. It's fine. Go ahead, go ahead and let your old people die. And it wasn't just him. There was a few people saying that shit. Trump said that they considered doing nothing, but they realized that like you might lose 2.2 million people or whatever if you do nothing. And, and I guess he decided that that was probably a number he was uncomfortable with. So you got to do something, but just, you know, just, 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 just give it a little while. You know, don't, don't try to keep the deaths as little as possible. You know, declare that you'll be satisfied if 100,000 people die, that that's not, that's a number you can fucking live with, 100,000. And now they're saying uh, it went from 100,000 out of Donald Trump's mouth two days ago, it went from 100,000 to 200,000 in less than 12 hours, and from that to 240,000 in another 20, uh, 12 hours after that. So they're saying anywhere between 100,000 and 240,000 deaths, and they're going to decide to declare that a victory? Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. 55, 58,000 whatever died in Vietnam over like 10, 15 year war. obviously, thankfully so far, we haven't lost that many people, but we all, we already can see that it's coming. Uh, America went from its first coronavirus death on the 29th of February to its 1000th coronavirus death on the 27th, I think of March to the 2000th coronavirus death on the 29th of March, 4000th on the 31st of March. And so it went on. And so it continues to go on. Yesterday, a thousand people died, 500 of them in New York. No end in sight. And nurses are quitting their jobs, understandably so, because they don't 
have PPE provided to them by their employers because they've run out. And the government knew this was coming. He sold the fucking stocks or gave the stocks away to China and didn't replenish them when they knew it was coming. Don't tell me they didn't choose this shit. And I mean, if you prefer to think that they're that fucking inept, how is that supposed to make anybody feel any better, right? Oh, it's, it's not that they're evil. They're just incompetent. They're just stupid. Well, then get them the fuck out. What the hell? I can't fucking wrap my head around why anybody wants to fucking give Trump a pass on this for any reason. The best possible interpretation, and he's an idiot. That's the best interpretation. He's got to go. Turned into a rant, didn't mean it to. So I think I'm going to end it there and get myself a, a nice calming uh, a, a drink. And I don't mean something alcoholic. I just mean some fluid. And, uh, and, uh, and um, yeah, let myself cool off a bit. I got myself all wound up. <laughs> Told you, this grumpy old man stuff just creeps up on you. And, and uh, it, you got to fight it off like a tiger. And uh, if you're a young man and think, oh, that's not going to happen to me. Yeah, man, I used to say that same shit when I was your age. So don't say I didn't warn you. All right, my brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope you're well at home. I hope that the people that you care about are taking care of themselves and you guys are all looking after each other in this difficult time that we're all living through. All the best.